in response to the protest during which dozens of people have died. The NHS in England could have saved billions of pounds by now if hospitals had used a blood flow monitor developed in Britain nearly 20 years ago. Doctors at University College Hospital London have been successfully using the ultrasound monitor during surgery, making operations safer and reducing the time patients spend in hospital. The health watchdog, NICE, now wants the device used in all hospitals, as our medical correspondent Fergus Walsh reports. Modern surgery is accompanied by a raft of medical machinery. Now there's another, this blood flow monitor, pioneered at University College Hospital in London. The anaesthetised patient will never know how it speeds their recovery. It works like this. A tube inserted in the gullet has an ultrasound probe at its tip. Using the same principle as a police speed gun, it emits ultrasound waves. These bounce off blood flowing out of the heart, measuring its speed and volume. Doctors can monitor exactly how much oxygen and nutrients are getting to vital organs, something blood pressure readings can't achieve. In the operating room, the main way it helps us to, is to adjust the amount of fluid and blood we give to a patient to maintain optimal flow. That helps prevent complications in the post-operative period. That therefore means that patients are, are well and enthusiastic to leave hospital much sooner than we'd experienced in the past. Unlike invasive monitoring via a tube inserted into the heart, ultrasound carries no risk of tissue damage or infection. NICE reckons this device cuts the amount of time patients spend in hospital after major surgery by an average of two days, saving a thousand pounds a time. In England alone, more than 800,000 patients a year could benefit, but it's hoped its use will grow UK-wide. This is not new technology. A small British company in West Sussex has been producing the monitor for nearly 20 years. So why has the NHS been so slow to adopt it? It takes a long time for ideas from the clinicians to feed through into the senior management, the sort of people who can make the decisions to do things on a wide scale. Uh, that's always been a problem, uh, less so in other countries maybe. The body which advises the NHS on how best to spend its money says it wants good ideas adopted more rapidly. We've been talking to the companies that develop medical devices and diagnostics. They've got lots of examples that they're going to bring to us which have these sorts of characteristics. They work well for patients and they deliver savings for the NHS. Now the onus is on hospitals to embrace technology which benefits budgets as well as patients. Fergus Walsh, BBC News. The inquest into the death of the newspaper seller Ian Tomlinson.